All right, guys, what is going on? Hopefully you're having a great day. Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. This video, I'm going to mention a topic which isn't really touched upon enough, which is how do you stay on top of medicine when it's an ever-growing field and there's literally new research coming out every single day? How do you do that while also keeping up with the old information that you're expected to learn? So I'm gonna give you my tips as a fourth year medical student who not only has to keep track of all the information I've learned throughout my four years of med school, but also start to grasp the new discoveries, new research uh, that's going on. So I'm gonna give you my tips and uh, I'll do that after this intro. All right guys, so this video is all about kind of how to stay up to date, I'll give you some of my resources that I love to use, and I'm gonna try to keep it short because the idea is really simple. Um, tip number one, and just getting straight into it, tip number one, you need to have a realistic schedule on how uh, up to date you wanna stay. So some people will sign up for a ridiculous amount of emails that they get every single day, and maybe they read the first few uh, days of that they're subscribed. You know, they may do like AMA morning rounds. They'll have like a, a New England Journal. They may have like a Nature articles uh, published and the, the newsletter sent to their emails. But over time, you get these emails and you just start to, you know, zone and tone them out. You're, you're not really paying attention to them because one, you have way too many resources and two, you're getting reminders every single day. So the first tip is come up with a realistic expectation. I think it's perfectly okay to say I'm going to read one to maybe three articles um, a month. And that may seem low to you guys, especially if you are you know, wrapping up um, your medical school career, you're about to become a resident. But one to three is a realistic goal because you can always hit more than that. But then one to three is essentially reading an article uh, a week and having or a weekend and having another weekend off. And so having a goal of saying, OK, every month I need to learn three new things of what's going on in the medical field. And so jumping into the tip two, which is have a go to resource on how you want to learn this. And so my go to research resource is the New England Journal of Medicine, which a lot of you guys probably have heard of. If you didn't uh, or if you're pre-med, this is one of the highest quality of uh, publications you can get in the medical field. And um, for students, it's like $65 to get the actual um, copy. And I think it's like 45 if you just want the online version. I like to have a physical copy because when it's mailed to me, first of all, you kind of feel a little bit special. And then two, it's very easy to kind of flip through and find that one article or three articles a month that you want to read. And uh, you can just like, you know, sticky note them, keep in your backpack and just read it really quickly. So I like to have, this is my resource. I don't have any emails coming from another uh, publication or another website. This is essentially what I use. So every month I have an email coming from the New England Journal. I know what articles are coming and then I see this in the mail and I'll read those articles. So I try to keep it um, short and simple to the point or as you know, short to the point uh, as possible because I'm not trying to overload myself. I'm just trying to progress without um, overdoing it. So that's tip two. Tip three is I love to feel like I'm kind of combining both new information as well as old information by using review articles. And um, I love review articles because sometimes they really show the highlights of how much you really don't know about a topic. So for example, again, using my one resource, which is New England Journal, they always have a review article every month or every issue. And uh, in this, uh, in this uh, version or this edition, it was the Langerhans uh, cell histocytosis. So fancy, fancy name. Don't worry about what that is. If you do know it, perfect. Um, but there's plenty of people where um, you've heard of the disease, you've heard of the condition. I actually had a patient uh, with this uh, that we diagnosed. It was pretty cool. But even after having a patient, I realized I don't really know much about it. And uh, I don't know what's changed in the two years since ago uh, I had a patient. So I find that review article and I usually make one of my three articles that I read per month a review article because then every month I'm learning about a lot about one topic. So I have like 12 topics that I'm starting to master or at least get better at. And so it helps me feel comfortable because going into internal medicine, I'm going to see a lot of you know things in cardiology. I'm going to see a lot of things in pulmonology. So if the, the review article, which it often does in a, in a publication like the New England Journal, if the review article deals with something in internal medicine, I read it. And so it becomes my one thing and I may not understand everything in the article, that's okay. Um, at least I feel a little bit comfortable if I had a patient or 
if I had to even consider that as a differential. And so that's the whole idea. They write review articles about things which many people are aware of, but don't feel comfortable with. And so it helps a little bit. And then the other two to three articles that I pick, I usually pick out of things that sound interesting. Often, um, I guess this is going into tip four, is to find if an article is really worth it, is to have a good structure on how you read um, the abstract. So the abstract, obviously, for any of you guys that are unfamiliar, is basically a few sentences of each section. So they explain their purpose, they explain their methods, they explain uh, the results, and then the conclusion. So it's a few sentences there. So essentially, it's a nice little paragraph before the couple of pages of the article. And so I have a good structure on how I approach my abstract. So under even under to even decide if I want to read the article or not. So. First, you read the title and you may say, OK, that seems like an interesting article to read. Let's see what it's about. Read the abstract, read what they want to get out of the, per the paper. So usually they'll tell you a problem that hasn't been answered. And then I just move to the results or the conclusion. I try to see, did they find anything interesting, right? Like if they were looking between the association between smoking and diabetes, I'm sure this has been looked up somewhere, in patients with liver disease, I'm totally making stuff up. Um, and they found, you know, and the results are like, okay, there is some type of connection, and this is what we found. That would be an interesting article to read. But if they found nothing, um, and I was expecting to not find anything, then maybe I would kind of let it go. Um, so that's usually my structure is if they find a result that I'm not expecting, or if they find uh, a level of, kind of like if they're looking at a medication or a treatment and they find that a treatment is pretty significant, um, that's something worth looking at. So uh, recently I was looking at a paper about hemophilia and there's like new medications coming out and they found that uh, people with hemophilias um, who don't uh, have a specific factor in their, uh, you know, coagulation cascade work, if they can give them a specific medication, they actually do much better. And so that was a really interesting article to read because again, it may be something that I may see as a future physician um, one day. So it is a result that's interesting enough to at least learn about. So those are kind of things to how I approach it. Again, I told you I'd keep this video short. And so I think I'm getting close to like eight minutes. So I'm just gonna quickly review my tips and then that's it. So number one is to have a very realistic and maybe conservative goal on how much you want to get out of each month. So one to three articles is totally fine. Um, number two is have one uh, go-to resource and maybe have an email uh, thing associated with it. So, you know, it can be an online version of a, a paper or um, a journal, and then it can you can uh, have the email reminders, which are totally fine. Number three is to have a um, a review article in your, I almost forgot my tip. Number three is to have a review article in one of your um, and articles that you read throughout the month because then you feel like you're actually learning about something that is known to be very important versus reading an article uh, about a study which may not bring any uh, relevant results in the long term future. And then number four is to have a way of evaluating whether an article is worth it for your time. So reading through the abstract, seeing if the results were something you were expecting or not expecting, and then seeing if it's worth your time of adding it to your one to three. That's pretty much it. I make a list of what I want to read every month and I put it on a sticky note on my computer. And then when it's my time, usually I do like a, a morning uh, on a weekend where I have some coffee and before I like check my emails, I go ahead and just pull up one or two of those articles, read it. And then I add it to um, a journal that I have where I'm writing everything that I, I'm learning and that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video is helpful if you guys are like, well, how do I how do I learn everything, Laksh? And I also, how do I keep up with all the new stuff that's coming out? This is my way. It's not the best way. There's probably people that do much better um, techniques. There's people that do a lot more reading and they're a lot more up to date. But this is my manner right now as a fourth year med student. I may make another video totally uh, later of how I kind of add to it but that's how I'm gonna go with my um, strategy and stay up to date uh, as a fourth year med student. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, comment down below. Um, let me know how you stay on top of medicine, all your kind of uh, personal um, things, topics that you enjoy uh, keeping track of. And as you know, I always try to give out freebies to uh, one lucky subscriber who comments uh, in my comment section. And so if you wanna be one of those uh, lucky winners for, uh, for my books and my video courses for totally free. Um, go ahead and comment below. Let me, uh, let me know what you learned, or you can just put the hashtag, the MD journey, and I'd be totally okay with that comment. Uh, but like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna stop babbling as I always do, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.